Hi everyone, Lou from Spitfire Audio here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how you can write a cinematic piece of music using the Symphonic Percussion Pro Bundle in conjunction with our Symphonic Orchestra range. The Symphonic Percussion Pro Bundle includes our extremely versatile Joby Burgess Spitfire Percussion Library, our beautiful Still Drum Library, our fantastic Alliphone Library, and the amazing HG20 Library which is a really unique take on the waterphone, helping to add some really striking and original elements to your music, as well as of course our wonderful Scrape Percussion Library. Paul's done an in-depth walkthrough of how these libraries can be used and what they have to offer, so make sure you check that out. Now I'm going to be taking you through how I used all five of these libraries and integrated them with our Symphonic Orchestra libraries to create a cinematic soundscape, so let's take a listen. So I started the piece off using the long bird articulation with the alliphone and it creates these amazing shimmers that swell in which was just a perfect jumping off point for the piece. That's such a great sound. Now I've also used a little bit of scrape percussion in the introduction as well and I'm using the tam tam patch. And as you can see, we've got a lot of different signals here that we can sort of customize our own mix with in the library. I've set up the ambient and stage mics for this one, just to give the piece a nice bit of room. I'm also fading in the expression just to really help accentuate the sound. And that appears three times in the piece at some of the key transitions. Firstly, when the woodwinds are introduced, then when the full orchestra comes in, and finally in the sort of more ambient ending section. As well as this, I have a little marimba roll at the beginning, and you can see a little bit later on in the orchestral section that I'm using the normal marimba just to play sort of thirds throughout this section of the piece to help build up a nice harmony. So the marimba roll at the introduction is a really nice way to introduce the instrument. Again, I faded the dynamics and expression on this roll, similarly to the scrape percussion, to create a nice sort of build up to the first section of the piece. So here's how that sounds. <laughs> And here's the normal marimba hits. As we get into our first section, we introduce a couple of new percussion layers. Additionally to our marimba hits, we have a cello pan roll in the steel drums, adding a nice hum as the woodwinds enter. I also have some toms and congas from the Spitfire Percussion Library introduced here. The toms are just playing on every beat of the bar with a slight accent on the first beat of the bar. And then we have the conga playing a little two note rhythm which grows throughout the piece in terms of velocity. I've also used HG20 to mimic some of the orchestral segments of the piece. We have an amazing tine bow patch which puts a real twist on my melody line in the flutes, adding an almost haunting vibe to it with those lovely harmonics singing out.
You can see I've also automated the water level here, and it's such a great feature which really allows you to change the sound and the way it rings out. The library also offers some more paddy sounds as well as the water phone. So here I've got a pad called Solace, which is imitating my bass part in the strings. I'm going to single out all the percussion for this bit so you can hear how it all works together. You can see I've included a second set of conga playing a sort of galloping rhythm, with some of the bongos copying the rhythm and gradually fading in and getting more aggressive with the hits as the piece goes on. I'll solo these out for you so you can hear what I mean. It's important to note that programming the velocity is a really crucial step into making your percussion section sound as realistic and effective as possible. Where you'd usually control the dynamics with your mod wheel or maybe draw in the automation for the scraped and bowed percussion, when it comes to struck percussion it all lies with the velocity. And I go about it in a similar way. If we take a look at this little temple block phrase, you can see the velocity follows a fairly fluid curve, similar to how an expression or dynamic curve would look. I've also drawn in an expression curve for the temple block again just to pronounce the velocity and the faster notes. Here's how that sounds. And finally, for this first section, we have a lovely Celeste playing a little sequence that repeats throughout the piece as an extra little melody to complement the symphonic strings that were introduced at the same time. Wonderful. Speaking of wonderful, there's also a fantastic timpani within the Spitfire Percussion Pro bundle. And I'm using the timpani rolls here to help transition into the repeat and second section. Here's how the complete first section sounds with the symphonic orchestra. Keep an ear out for the Celeste, HG20 patches and conga rhythms as they swell in. Now from here on out we've got the full symphonic orchestra with a powerful symphonic brass section joining us. So to match that power in percussion I'm using the timpani hits. I'm only playing the notes C and F so what I've done is I've panned all the C notes whether it's a roll or a hit to the left and all of the F notes to the right to really fill out the space. The timpani is also playing the same rhythm as our first conga but only every other bar. So here's how the timpani section and our first conga line sound together. Powerful stuff. And you can see I've doubled up the timpanis, playing an octave lower as we get to the climactic second section of the music. I've also included these great Alifone soft shorts which resonate really nicely. There's also a combination of conga playing a little fast phrase which goes something like this. When composing with percussion, I tend to create a lot of simple or short rhythms and then layer them up as the piece develops. And with all of those different rhythms working with each other, it can create something really powerful. Layering them up works especially well when you want to make something sound cinematic or triumphant. Moving on to our second section where the timpani is doubled up, I've got some more toms playing a loud new rhythm. The rhythm is pretty much the same every bar with maybe the addition of a few passing notes or accents to create a nice bit of variety. 
You don't need to go too overboard to create something that works. I'll single this out for you so you can hear how I've slightly changed the rhythm as the piece goes on. Again, we got the velocity increasing as we build to the end. There's also the return of the still drums library, playing some hits very faintly as the orchestra takes over, just to add a little bit of flavor. It mainly just plays arpeggios throughout, which sounds something like this. And finally for the percussion, we have a lovely glockenspiel from our Spitfire percussion library. I've doubled this track up and panned it left and right just so it sounds a bit wider and it plays a little counter melody to our orchestra. Here's how all of the percussion fit in with our symphonic orchestra in the second section. I tell you to listen out for the timpanis, but you can't miss them. Here we go. Right, into the closing section, we have both tom tracks playing on every beat of the bar, while the timpani plays the first beat of every two bars. I've got the velocity and a bit of expression fading them out until the end. The same goes for the steel drum as well as that dies out. The glockenspiel almost takes over the steel drums role, now playing arpeggios until the end, and we've also changed the time signature for the last bit, with it going from 7-4 to 4-4. Four four. Now as the strings fade out, we transition into some of the softer percussion's pad-like sounds, with a return to our bowed allophone and a different HG2O pad called incandescence. I've got this over three tracks, with the lowest note panned left, the middle note in the center, and the higher notes panned to the right, again to create space. We've also got this low pass filter here, and here's how this patch sounds. has an almost organ-like quality to it. We've got a really large range of signals to use with the Scrape Percussion Library, and I've created this quick mic mix using the tree, ambient, and stage mics to give the sound a nice, spacey, atmospheric quality to it. As well as our little temple block returning for the second and final time, we have a mark tree creating a lovely sparkling sound which fades out with all of the other instruments into silence. The only reason I bounced this in place is because I wanted a specific recording of the mark tree, and I felt that also sort of cross-faded quite nicely with the strings as they died out. That's it in terms of what instruments I use within this incredible bundle. I'm just going to play you that ending for you so you can hear how our symphonic orchestra fades out solely into our symphonic percussion pro libraries. <laughs>
There we are. In terms of the mix, there's nothing too heavy. I just played around with the panning a lot to create as much space as possible so it can sound really epic. And then with the orchestra, I panned them standard to where they'd be arranged. And then Bus One contains UAD's Lexicon 224 reverb, which was super useful for some of the more ambient percussion sounds, helping some of those accents on the Congo to ring out, as well as being used throughout the orchestral section. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope this has been helpful for you, and do remember to check out Paul's walkthrough on the Spitfire Percussion Pro bundle if you haven't already. Make sure to give us a like, and if you've got any questions, leave them for us in the comments below. Enjoy the libraries, and I'll see you in the next one.